Hello and welcome to another episode of Practical IT. In this episode, we're going to talk about Canonical's multi-pass, which you could look at as a competitor to something like Docker. It is very similar to the way Docker runs. This is cross-platform. It is currently free. And I've got it installed on my Mac, and we will be taking a look at this in a few moments. So their summary says, Multipass is a mini cloud on your workstation using native hypervisors on all supported platforms, Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. It will give you an Ubuntu command line in just a click of open shell or a simple multi-pass shell command or even a keypad shortcut. This 1.0 version was just released 27 minutes ago as of this recording. So highlights, full desktop integration across all platforms. Use a keyboard shortcut, control alt U or command alt U, alt or option on the Mac. Uh, to open a shell in your primary instance. Your home directory will automatically be mounted in slash capital home uh, in your primary instance. There's a checkbox under the about item to toggle the system tray menu starting automatically on login. And the, uh, the website gained a new docs section that'll be updated with content uh, but you can also contribute to the discourse, etc. So let me bring over the shell on the Mac. Clear that. And we'll say multi-pass help. And it gives you your help. If you say multi-pass launch... You could specify a name, but if you don't specify a name, it will assign a randomly generated name to you. And so this one is going to be called Erudite Agouti, kind of an interesting naming convention. And it's going to grab this, get it set up, and we'll take a look at some commands and then wrap up the video since this is very new to me I did I actually downloaded the 0 0.10 version this morning and then I saw the notification that the 1.0 version had come out and so I thought okay well I will download the new version and go ahead and do a quick video. Now we've got some additional multi-pass commands we can look at. So if we do multi-pass list, it will tell us the name, the state, and the IP address. So from the Mac side, we can ping that IP address with no issues. We can do multi-pass info and the name of our machine and it will give you information about the running machine and it has allotted a 4.7 gigabyte virtual drive. It gives you the image hash, the release, and memory usage. Uh, let's look at multi-pass shell um, and we've got a full shell as you can see it changed from the ZSH shell on Mac OS since I'm running Catalina to the bash shell on Linux and you can see if we do bash version we are running the 4.4 4 
version of bash on Linux. And just for the sake of argument, it is the 4.15 kernel. It's the 18.04.3 LTS version of Ubuntu running here. And so from here, you know, we could install whatever software we wanted. And HTOP is already installed. And so we've got HTOP. Which is great. So we can do Control D to go back to our Mac shell. If we do multi pass help again, and then multi pass list. And this time I'm just going to copy this. And then if we want to stop the instance, we could say multi pass stop and the name, and it will stop it. Multi-pass delete in the name, and it'll delete it, but it will not purge it. Multi-pass list shows the state of Erudite Agaudi as deleted. If we say multi-pass purge, it'll delete all of the, uh, it'll purge all of the deleted instances that we've created. All right, so at this point, I'm going to wrap this up and keep this short. I'm interested to hear from you, my viewers, what you might do with multi-pass and whether you are going to try it in addition to or instead of Docker. Since this is cross-platform, Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, it will be sort of interesting to see what type of adoption this gets, especially now hitting the 1.0 version, compared to some of the other things that are out there. In all honesty, I actually kind of like this better than the Windows subsystem for Linux, uh, since it's lightweight for starters and I can run the same commands everywhere. So I'd be interested in hearing your thoughts. That's what the comment section is for. If you like the video, please give a thumbs up and subscribe. Once again, I thank all of you for watching and have a great day.